Sure. We're going to go live in a few seconds, but we can just. One second, one second, one second. Let me get this. Okay, one second. Let me get into this. Sure. We're going to go live in a few seconds, but we can just. One second, one second, one second. Let me get this. Okay, one second. Let me get into this. Sure. I'm gonna go live in a few seconds, but we can just one second, one second. Now wait, Facebook Facebook? So I okay, I've got it up. So okay, so let's go to FaceTime. Okay. Oh, that was me. That was me. I always do that. Where I have Facebook open because I'm like getting ready for the live and then I can hear echo. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Roman, for coming on tonight. It's been a lot, it's been a while. It's been a while. I know, I know. I've been so busy with puppies. And yeah. uh, the work has been very busy, which is, it's, mm. it's, it's, you know, it's nice to be able to feel you're helping, you know, a lot of different animals with different cases, but it has been, um, the last week has been very, very frustrating to look at how my colleagues are continuing to treat cases unsuccessfully over and over and over again, and still keep doing it. <laughs> and I, I don't get it. It's like, they're not, these animals aren't getting any better and they keep doing more antibiotics and more medication and more Apoquil and more Cytopoint and the dogs are not getting any better. And I find it very, um, really frustrating and sad that veterinarians are, are not looking for other ways to, uh, you know, bring better health to their patients and just keep relying on the drugs and are not looking at how important the gut microbiome is, how important it is to add nutraceuticals that nurture the gut and how important it is to really have modalities like ozone that reduces the biofilm and increases the, the, the mitochondrial function of the gut. And so why are we not using these modalities when it comes to you know, so much chronic GI problems as well as you know, chronic allergies and skin problems? So why do, you, why do you think that is? Why do you think they're not using these tools? I, I just don't think they're getting educated about the, the potential of using the microbiome. Um, you know, the veterinarians, if you talk to, I'd say if everyone here asked a veterinarian about microbiome and rest, microbiome restorative therapy or FMT, there'll be very few that have ever done it. And I think it's still sort of not mainstream, uh, you know, utilized. And, and if it is mainstream utilized, they're not doing it in a way that's successful. And this mm -hmm. is why I want to present this case about Doug, who was a dog that uh, had all that done, it didn't work. And then they came to us, we did it our way, and the dog was successful. So what, 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 uh, what kind of dog, start from the beginning, what kind of dog is Doug and what did he have done before? Why was it unsuccessful? Well, I can show you if you want, if you have anybody online already yet or not yet. Yes, we do, we have viewers. Um, how do you, do you want me to I give you- share, I can share the screen and have, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Can you? Do you have that? Uh, are you yeah. able to share the screen? Yeah, share screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh no. Um, can you share the screen? I, shoot, I don't know if I can. Can, can you, I? At the bottom of your thing says share oh. screen. Okay, so now that? you should be able to do it. Okay, one second. Okay, here we go. Awesome. So do you see yeah. this picture? Yes. Okay, so this is, we're gonna do. Doug suffering with diarrhea going out five times during the night for nine months, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Wow. So this is a picture of Doug, although we're covering his picture on the corner here for me and my thing. Okay, so this is Doug and Doug was suffering with diarrhea going out five times during the night and six to eight times during the day. That was his life. He they. So I'll give you the backstory on this little guy. Okay, these are notes from the backstory on Angel Memorial. So he, in his early history, he had a DHPP, rabies and kennel cough all on the same date on 4121, and had limes and Lyme and Lepto uh, given in those days. So when he came into Angel, uh, when he ca came to them, he had flown in from uh, uh, the Western part of the country and uh, he came in and he had diarrhea. And they obtained the dog at six months of age and he had diarrhea. The original veterinarian started him on metronidazole, parental, 
fecal test, food isolation, probiotics. A new fecal show, Giardia and Crypto. So they started on Tylen, Verbantal, probiotics. Diarrhea was better for a few days than return. Then dog is lethargic and question and reinfection parasites, IBD, and they questioned whether the dog had Addison's. And it was given again, metronidazole, Panicure, Hills WD. So it's been on antibiotics already three times we, when they first came in early April, when they got the dog, came, that got the dog in April, given all these vaccines, given all that stuff at the same time at their regular vet, okay? When the dog had diarrhea, <laughs> okay? So, and then July 28, 21, diarrhea is still present, but worse after eating some chicken treat. Uh, th that's the food sensitivity chicken, but since had been positive for Giardia before starting Serenia, another course of metronidazole, Panicure, Science WD, and Sympartica Trio. Oh my gosh. Okay. On August that. 11th, it still continued with diarrhea and now had an ear infection and on both ears and went home on Drontel, Tylen, and WD. On October 2nd, it had continued diarrhea. And this is five times a night. In the middle of the night, he, they had to get them out every hour and a half. During the day, they had to get them out six to eight times. Okay, this is, this is the kind of diarrhea it was. Continued diarrhea and finished all meds concerning about IBD, food allergies, and started on Tylen and sulfazylene. So on August 8th, on October 8th, he continued diarrhea. The Tylen helped slightly, but now has severe anxiety. Started on sulfazine, Purina OM, this biome capsules started start Prozac for anxiety, but the, ozone, the uh, owner decided not to start the Prozac. They recommended uh, FMT uh, in four to six weeks after antibiotics cleared. So she had requested the FMT, the owner, because she herself is a researcher and she knew about FMT. So she requested from Angel the FMT. Hmm. So they did two FMTs at Angel with full anesthesia. Wow. Uh, first one was November 9th, 2021. The patient was sedated and placed in sternal recumbency with posterior elevation. 50 grams of fecal material was mixed with 200 ml of serum, uh, saline rather, not serum, blended and strained. Approximately 160 ml of the solution was instilled in the colon and via an enema using a 60 cc syringe and a rub, red rubber catheter. Patient was kept in, 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 in that sedated position for 45 minutes following the enema, okay? One was done on November 9th and the second one was done on December 3rd. In the first one that, that Angel did, they got six weeks of more normal stools, but the frequency was still six to nine times a day. The diarrhea at night had, not, had sort of stopped but it never stopped the six to nine times a day of loose stools. The second one had no change and was back to the five times a day, five times a night and six to nine times during the day. So both of them were unsuccessful uh, with the therapy that they used. Okay, so the therapy that they use, they, they are not using ozone. They're not doing nutri nutraceutical prep. They're not and post uh, fecal transplant. They're not giving uh, vitamin shots that help uh, the, the basement membrane with vitamin A and D and B and C the way we do it. Um, and of course their donors have nothing in common with what my donors are. My donors are, like I said, six generations organically raised for 30 years and never have had antibiotics. I don't know what they have for donors, but most of them are eating commercial dog food and probably prescription dog food. What the difference of FMT and ANGEL uh, and the MRT done is our donors are four to fifth and sixth generation protected with organic, fresh and holistic care. We have no use of or exposure to antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides in 29 years for six generations. They're naturally raised and reared in organic free home. They were all vaginally birthed so they, and nursed until they were 12 weeks. Very different than the standard dog. Uh, so these are very you know, unique donors. Um, and so from, this is a quote from the owner, one second, one second. Main difference is hardly any vomiting now and two to three bowel movements a day versus six to eight, even post and prior transplants. So that was her, her, one of her quotes that she sent to me. So the method. This was after coming, after coming to MASH to, to no, see. No, no, no. The, the, that after MASH, that's what they got was there's, it's been now five and a half weeks since we did it. 
dog has had normal stools two times to three times a day, um, is happy. They don't have any diarrhea. They are th thrilled. So I'm going to go over our post-treatment. Oh yeah. So the method used at MASH for our MBRT, we add ozonated gas to disrupt the biofilm. We use 24 micrograms per milliliter um, and, uh, and put it into the colon, depending on the weight of the dog. In this case, we probably did about 60 or 70 cc's of, of ozonated, sal ozonated uh, gas, not saline and then place the MBRT slurry as high into the colon. No anesthesia, on, it's all done standing. The dog is just passively standing there. Very few dogs have to, excuse me, be sedated. It's, if they're really aggressive in the clinic, then they, they have to be sedated just because we can't trust them to do, you know, we don't want them fight, fighting on the floor with them. But I'd say about 95% of ours don't get anything, but they're just standing like this dog in the picture. They did a Texas A&M GI laboratory biome analysis, um, which showed all this dysbiosis that this dog had. And um, I just wanna mention that in 2014, we donated uh, 200 100 samples to Texas A&M for them to have their normal for their dysbiosis index. And you know, so you can run all these tests and these tests are great to sort of identify that these animals are dysbiotic, but these tests are really a drop in the bucket because there are 500 species and a thousand subspecies. Um, and we really are, they're listing like maybe 10 species there um, and we can do a 16S. So it's nice to see that, that distribution, but that distribution is not where the state of, the state of science is. Uh, it's the state of where medical testing can be done. We know that there's so many more and we don't even know what they do because it's such a big, huge uh, world. This was our treatment plan with our nutraceuticals uh, to help develop the gut terrain. And so we, we do a lot of support for the gut with gut ion and uh, colostrum and Nutrigest. And uh, we always I always include an omega-3 fatty acid to bring down the inflammation. I use our mash mix, which has phytonutrients like alfalfa and um, uh, um, spirulina. So, and spirulina is also a very good food for the microbiome between the, the colostrum and the uh, spirulina. Those are two really important pieces to help uh, with gut communication and, and, and nutrients. Um, and so there were other, we, we detoxed the dog also with lm one thuya because it had had so many vaccines and having all those vaccines at once in the immune system was just not a good uh, medicine to do on an animal. Uh, we have to really let our veterinarians know that there's no rush to push all these vaccines at the same moment. Uh, they can be separated and reduced. Um, and just FYI, my puppies have, the puppy this, this generation has only had one distemper and one parvo. And we held off till they were over 12 weeks to give them their first shot. And we did antibody titers and they're protected. So uh, you, we didn't need to give him four vaccination series to get an antibiotic protection. So all these things need to be really um, thought through by conventional veterinarians that we may, you know, we think we're rescuing them from these terrible diseases and we are, but are we causing a lot of harm in, the, in trying to do that? So we tested the dog with the National Veterinary Diagnostic Service. And if you can see these numbers, because it's hard because they're light blue, but that IgA was 56, which is very low. And uh, his adrenal estrogen was very high, which he is sort of telling us he's so inflamed. Um, and his thyroid was borderline. So I'm hoping that this dog with the fecal transplant can get that thyroid level back in balance uh, because it's so close and it's so, it was so dysbiotic that it, how could he even absorb any, any of the nutrients it needs to take care of a normal thyroid? So it may have been just not really accurate. Uh, these are the costs that she incurred uh, with the treatments that we did. Um, and so people can see I, you know, I really would like to get the cost of what she spent at these other doctors uh, for months and months seeing multiple doctors at, at Angel and multiple doctors at her other veterinary clinic. So this is a, um, we had a follow-up original visit, visit at MASH was a virtual exam done on 1522 and history was taken. We did the MBRT on 1822 and we started nutritional support with rabbit and some low estrogen ve ve veggies like zucchini and fruits and like, and fruits like blueberries. And we saw a slight bit of nausea. Um, 
uh, in the first two weeks, a little bit, he was just a little bit nauseous, but the diarrhea had cleared up completely. Um, and he also had reduced his anxiety. And he, as of, um, you know, as, as, yeah, so he started, and that, so then his stools actually had been totally normal, like what, you know, 24 hours after he got the fetal transplant. Oh, I must have put Yeah, the uh, Dr. Roman, is he, is he being weaned off the Prozac? He never, he never, she never put it on him. Okay. She got prescribed it, but she's, she's a, she's a doctor herself. So she did not want to give it to him. She never used it, which was great that she had. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be one sixteen twenty two instead of normal still. So she did, they did a glacier peaks um, for the food sensitivity uh, again, a different one, but I think they had done food sensitivity before that uh, as well. Um, but that wasn't helping even before that. Right. So that wasn't helping, but we afterwards we're trying to do it. So this is in the owner's own words. So I, she, I said, could you write up the case for me? She said she was getting and getting no sleep for months. We felt terrible for Doug, who was the sweetest, kindest dog and was suffering so much. Then he started vomiting as well and couldn't keep down much food. We tried a six week straight course of metronidazole. As soon as we stopped the treatment, the diarrhea returned and it was completely liquid. And I'm gonna move your, move your screen, uh, liquid and horrible. Um, we finally were recommended for a fecal transplant at Angel. It seemed like a cure that actually, see, at first it seemed like a cure that actually worked. We had six happy weeks of diarrhea free life at night, she said. Um, and we were so, so happy and he was full of energy. The diarrhea returned with vengeance. We opted for another fecal transplant, hope for the best. And it was Christmas holiday and we were exhausted taking out, dog outside to the bathroom five times a night between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. It was, un, it was unattainable, uh, untenable and poor sweet Doug was suffering. After the second fe fecal transplant, we had dire ret re return within a few days. It was awful. There's that we were, okay, so we were so grateful for, doc, for Doug getting his life back and our family with happiness. So one second, where's the next one? Wow. So here, here's, this is his normal stool the next day from diarrhea to this in one day. Oh my gosh. I think it's pretty cool. To me, it looks like a, a, a person put, lifting their hand up and pushing a kite or something. <laughs> it looks like two legs and an arm and a head and a, you know, anyway. And with the addition of frozen nuggets of poop, his stomach is totally normal. So once we gave him some frozen little pieces of the poop, the little nuggets, he stopped having any nausea. And this is wow. him without his, this is, you know, him when he's happy and feeling good. So did that. You, uh, did you skip a slide? It was the, it was the second. I did. There was a sl there's another slide in here. This one. Second page of notes. Yeah. Yeah. We skipped this one. One second. Can I play that? Okay. So, uh, okay. Here, the power of microbiome was done correctly. We went on a search to find a solution and came upon Dr. Roman. As a pharmacologist in the field of infectious disease for over 22 years, I understood and appreciated the critical role of microbiome in health and how an unbalanced gut can cause many diseases. As I watched her videos, I became more convinced that her comprehensive approach uh, and focus on a healthy raw diet, ozone therapy, vitamins, minerals, along with microbiome replacement, this from a healthy donor raised without antibiotics and processed food and included an oral MBT capsule would be make a difference. I'm happy to report that Dr. Roman's approach has been a true miracle for Doug and our family. He has not had a single episode of diarrhea since the transplant. It is like 100% different experience. Doug now eats fresh organic food and continues the oral, she calls them MBT capsules, as well as various supplements to support his microbiome health. He is a new dog and we are grateful, Dr. Roman, for giving Doug his life back and giving our family happiness. Wow. So I think that's pretty is powerful. That so real, the reason that I think is this that is real important technique? is that they did all the fecal transplants. They still didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Right? No, and that's, and that's because they're, you know, feeding processed food like Hills. They're over-vaccinating. They're giving the, the pesticides orally, topically, they're probably, I'm sure they're, you know, not intact, you know, generationally, 
they're probably born with leaky gut and it's just a, you know, a, you know, right. Is that why that they're not having, well, I think that they, you know, when the way that angel approached it, um, and the other vets approach it, we're going to kill off. We're going to kill off. We're going to kill off. Instead of saying, we're going to nurture, we're going to nurture, we're going to, it's okay, guys, we're going to nurture. We're going to keep nurturing, you know, the microbiome and support you instead, you know, the, they did the fecal transplant, but because they didn't use the kind of quality donor, it didn't work. So this is where, you know, when, when people say, well, you got to do a double blinded study, you know, you got to give them a fecal transplant from another dog and see if it works. Right. So I don't have another dog that I can give a fecal transplant from my dogs are cared a certain way and they're kept all organic and healthy and never had pesticides, never had spot on there. And I can't say that about the donors that are used at, from these other hospitals that are not having that quality of donor. So that's mm -hmm. where, you know, and then also, you know, they're feeding a commercial dead diet, you know, WD diet. I mean, there's not much good microbiome, you know, support in there. And even their microbiome diet doesn't have live food in it. It's got some probiotics in it, but it doesn't have what the gut needs to correct itself. Mm. So we're keeping this dog on the microbiome. She doesn't want to take him off. And so he's been taking the poop capsules and she doesn't, she just feels like he's so good. I don't want a chance. And some dogs that do have this, the syndrome of that low IgA and the Plechner, they do need poop more frequently because their gut has been so, you know, initially not healthy from, from the get-go and we're trying to keep nurturing them. Mm -hmm. Are you able to uh, stop share screen if that's the, is that the end? Sure, 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 sure. Let's stop the screen. One second. That was like, great. That was a great, uh, is, uh, that his, is that his real picture? Yeah. He is gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, he is gorgeous. He is really a handsome guy. Wow. We go out of the screen, shared screen. So you, yeah. you had a very similar, this, is this, is this similar to, um, is it Stroven? Who is, who is that? The dog? Stoven, yeah, that was Stoven too. My first Stoven. transplant. My yeah. first fecal transplant, he went from this emaciated, you know, look like bag of bones, white, fluffy dog to a strikingly gorgeous, healthy dog from the fecal transplant and from supporting him the way that we did. And that, that was over 10 years ago. And, you know, I gave a lecture at Angel uh, a year after that case and presented his case. And I really had hoped that, and I'm hoping that we can take this case and show them you know, there's so much more than just the physical thing of doing a fecal transplant. You really need to have the support of the body nurturing that, the gut to nurture the body so that you can back and forth and nurture it. And again, a big key component is using the ozone because it does reduce biofilm and you can't get rid of biofilm. You don't know what antibiotic it's going to be sensitive to. Even in people where they use metronidazole and vancomycin, you know, they have to put these people on these very strong antibiotics and it disrupting a lot. So if you could do it with ozone that is safe and effective and it, it goes in there, does its thing, removes the, the biofilm, and then you put that healthy microbiome in there, you know, that would be great. There's just so many little pieces that are so important. The ozone, of course, is critical, as you say, to the success mm -hmm. of microbiome transplant. But then there's also, you know, there's the diet, there's, you know, probably adding in digestive enzymes, letting it mixing it into the food, letting it sit for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, the, the animal getting vitamin injections. Mm -hmm. I mean, Allie, Allie was another case that was very similar, you know, in 2018, I had pictures, her pelvis was like sticking out her, she was skin and bones. Yeah. She was emaciated. We did the fecal transplant. We added the supplemental support. Um, and, you know, she started gaining weight, but she also had Plechner. You know, so um, it's really sad to see these dogs that basically starving to death and just pooping out straight water, diarrhea and blood. And it's, uh, you know, yeah, like you said, they just have this approach of just let's kill, kill, kill. Um, what do you think is going to drive the change? What do you think is going to get these? Um, I don't know. I'm hoping that this case, if I if I present it to Angel in a way that's not threatening, because I don't want to be threatened. I just want to help these animals. Like, why well, can't we collaborate and see the quality, be able to approach Tufts and show them some of the cases and have them learn that there's more to treating a disease than finding a drug that will work its, its system 
you know, work for you in the way that the drug company thinks it's going to work. You know, how much more valuable would it be if you had the animal heal itself? And that's the whole part of holistic. You know, that's what, you know, looking at a body and saying, okay, how, what do I need to do? And what do you need to do? And how can I help you do what you can do? So I don't have to do very much and the body heals itself. And that's the, that's the, the, the whole piece of, of, you know, how do you get the body to heal? So why you know, are they, why are they so stuck on processed foods when like human doctors are recommending fresh whole foods, wholesome nutritious foods for, for people, but why are veterinarians still, you know, recommending processed foods? Well, I think that they feel like people can't do it correctly and they're going to have their animals deficient and they're going to not give their animals the right foods and stuff. Uh, my, my clients are really smart. I mean, I just think that giving the people knowledge and, you know, people don't, I always made the joke and I was going to, you know, make, and I still say it, you know, when, when you get a child, you know, they don't give you, you know, they give you formula to give a baby for the first few months, but they don't give you toddler chow and, and, you know, and, and four-year-old chow and six-year-old chow. And they make you eat that same stuff over and over again, because they're afraid that you may not feed them properly. Um, and they, they got to grow and their brains have got to grow. So let's give them, you know, X kinds of chow. So you have, you know, couch potatoes chow and you have, you know, soccer team chow and you have all these different kinds of chows that your kid can eat or you feed them a variety of colorful vegetables and fruits and, you know, and give them a diverse, uh, healthy, organic food. I would hope that that would be a better thing than having a chow for your kid to eat over and over and over again. I think that that's something that, um, you know, makes logic sense to anybody who, who right. knows anything about food, you know, but you know, when you have companies like Hills, Perina, Imes, Royal Canaan paying for the vet school's nutrition department and pays for their faculty, then it's really hard to have the faculty tell them don't buy these foods and you should make your own and here's some good, healthy, organic recipes. It, and most people don't have the time to take care of their dogs like that. And they don't have the time to make it. I made food the last three days and, you know, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of cost um, because it's, it's the labor, but it's my labor of love when I'm making this food because whatever I put into my dogs comes out the other end and is helping other dogs. So I'm not only feeding my dog, I'm feeding my patients and the animals yeah. that get the microbiome. I was there yesterday picking up poop. <laughs> yep. Every, every weekend, almost, you know, I don't know. Well, now. You're, you're unusual. Most people don't, don't pick up poop. <laughs> no, they, no they, they don't. But they you don't. know, it's like, if you can get the microbiome organized and keep supporting it and take nurturing it and giving it the same kind of foods that this microbiome likes to have, you know, then you can keep perpetuating it, hopefully, but some animals can't, some animals, there's just such a toxic environment in their body that they get in there and the microbiome can't, can't, you know, thrive for years. It, it thrives for days. And you need, those are the dogs that you need to give fetal transplants more often, yeah. but that's better than having them in intensive care, getting vomiting and diarrhea for five days and with eight, you know, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis or you know, anxiety, you know, just throwing up all the time. Right. So, you know, can you talk, can you talk a little bit about the, we've been getting a lot of questions about the vitamin injections that you do. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So again, the vitamin injections, uh, I could do vitamin D levels and vitamin B levels, probably vitamin A levels too, as well. Not so much vitamin C levels. Um, and they would take a week or two to get back. And so, you know, I know that the vitamins that we give sometimes sting. And then I'd say, a, you know, I'd say a, a small percentage, but still a percentage of dogs get irritated by the vitamins. And it's like, should, and I try to put them into a pocket of ozonated saline. So they're not so irritating to them. And I warn the clients usually like this, be careful here and here, because I may be sore. They may be sore in those areas. Um, but I feel like if I don't give them Will I know, because their, their feeling is that they need a certain level of vitamin D, certain level of B vitamins for good absorption of the basement membrane of the gut. And so to know exactly what that is in real time, I can't do it. There's not like an instant test that I can do a dipstick and say, oh, your B levels are fine. Your vitamin D levels are fine. 
I figure, you know, right. if I'd rather give it to them, deal with 24 hours of discomfort, you know, and then make sure that that fetal transplant worked. You know, I did Absolutely. everything I could to make that fecal transplant have all the, the pieces it needed, you know, to get that to happen. So, you know, are there other ways to give B vitamins? Yes, we could try with intravenous and do, you know, sort of a Myers cocktail, and that's going to make the cost of this thing go up another $250, you know, so, you know, do I do that instead? Um, that's have, a possible you ever, have you done that? Not recently. I did them years and years ago, but yeah, you could probably add a lot of the methyl blues and methyl Vs and you could put some, I don't think, I don't know if there's vitamin D that's in a, in an IV. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried to do that, but you know, it is uncomfortable, but if we can get into a large pocket and what happens with some dogs, we do the sub Q and cause I want the ozone to be absorbed a little bit in that area, but some dogs just suck up the, the saline and you are trying to figure out where was the pocket. So you yeah. try to find the pocket and give it in the pocket. And sometimes that's already dropped down so that the vitamin D doesn't get as diluted as I'd like it to be. And then that animal is uncomfortable at that location or on the vitamin C side. So I always try to put the vitamin D on the left side and the vitamin C on the other side. And so the, the owner knows like, you know, the vitamin D he might be sensitive to or the vitamin B complex he might be sensitive to. So. I always thought ozone uh, increased vitamin uptake. So if you put it in the, at the exact same time, it, but it, it actually kills it. No, I think if you put, I, my thought is you, you're supposed to wait to give vitamin C after you do ozone. Okay. Okay. So when you do intravenous vitamin C, you're supposed to wait at least an hour and a half, but the sub Q vitamin C is not picked up like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's not, you know, you're systemically giving the ozone. And so it, giving us vitamin C is going to take a while for that to get absorbed. So when you do intravenous vitamin C, where you're giving, you know, 5,000 milligrams or something like that, you're, you know, you're, it's a whole different thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So how are the, how are the puppies doing? Uh, do you still Good. have them or do you? Are you I still have four and I think cilantro may be going to New Jersey. Yeah, wow. Oh, so he may be being the donor for uh, Jerry Bukoff's practice in New Jersey. So little fall. Little Falls, New Jersey. So if yeah, anyone is in maybe going Falls, there, yeah. So you can start requesting if you live in that area, because he'll be going. Hopefully, we're just discussing the all the different pieces of him being the donor down there, and then apple and papaya and parsley are here. We're trying to you know train them, and we're not sure who's going to California to be a service dog for my granddaughter. So we're trying, we think it's Apple, but I don't know if it is. We're just. So we yeah. got, I'm going to just put this in the chat. We got New Jersey, Dr. Jerry, Jerry Bukoff, B-U-C-H-O-F-F. -F. And he's going to. Um, he's Cilantro. Going to yeah. Okay. So anybody right. who's interested, you and he's already doing fecal transplants with our donors. We ship him the poop and he's doing it there, but that way he can have a live uh, transfer. Yep. And then uh, are there any other puppies going to veterinarians or will be available to veterinarians? Uh, well, there's, there's, there's um, Quinoa, whose now name is Eve, and she's in Los Angeles with Dr. Audra McCorkle. And then uh, Blueberry is, is helping with uh, Sue, Terry Sue Wright, who's in Eugene, Oregon. Dr. Audra McCorkle in LA. Uh, yeah, in LA. The other one is Terry Sue Wright, who is in um, in Eugene, Oregon. And she's starting to do the fecal transplants there. He had already his first one about two weeks ago that he, that, you know, uh, was a live transfer and the dog had diarrhea it's, since the people had it and it stopped the next day. So wow. he's, he's had his already his first success. And I think um, uh, Evie is doing her first one tomorrow. We're, we're, we're keeping posts of who's got what and who's doing what, you know? So, um, but it's, yeah, so the, adding the puppy yeah. poop right now has been really nice. It's just added a whole nother dimension. So we're doing mixology right now. So anyone yeah. who wants to get one can get a puppy poop uh, with, the, with the mixology right now. Are you, are you keeping one of the puppies? Have you decided? Oh, yeah, no, I'm keeping one. I, I mean, I'd keep all of them, but I don't, I have, can't take care of all of them Just so much. Yeah. So I haven't figured out which one yet. I mean, I have three, the three girls and, um, I'm not sure which one, one may be going up to, 
uh, Vancouver to be involved with Novel Biome, which is a company that does human fetal transplants, and they're going to start a veterinary division and oh, start wow. shipping, it, shipping it internationally. That's um, and our puppies are also we're shipping our our um, poop from the weekends directly to Animal Biome, and they're freeze drying right now. And then we're going to start downstairs in the basement doing freeze drying in in real time. So we'll get it in and we'll have it frozen by the end of the day and freeze dry. Wow. So it'll be really fresh. Fresh That's freeze great. dry. Yeah. So wow. we're going to be so, full of poop at our practice. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. We'll love to hear that. Um, so yeah, you, you do mixology, which involves mixing like Vienna or Hannah or Eliza. Um, is there any rhyme, or reason, any rhyme or reason when you, why you pick a dog, certain dog? Um, I think Vienna has uh, the most congenial personality. So if I have a dog that's aggressive, I'll use Vienna. The other ones are all sweet. They're all really nice. But if there's a dog that's ex is, that has a real kind of anxiety kind of, and she's so nurturing. She like she nurtured, she, the Hannah had the puppies and was so protective and loving and everything. And then about six and a half, seven weeks of age, when they were starting to chew on her breast, she had, didn't want to have any, she was like, I'm, I'm out of the litter, I'm out of, out of the whelping box. And Vienna had come in and she stayed with them. And I, I asked the dogs, I said, somebody has to stay with these puppies and nurse them till 12 weeks. And she went in there at about five weeks and started nursing them. And then ha Hannah said, okay, you take over, I'm gone. <laughs> so yeah, um, Vienna nursed them all. So she's really nurturing. And she's constantly, you know, if I, I'm holding them and hugging them, she wants to lick their faces and clean their eyes and clean their, you know, peepees. And they just, she just loves to just lick them all. So she's very, very nurturing. So I, I use that's her for animals that, that need that kind of extra kind of stuff. That's wonderful. Well, I uh, thank you for coming on here and sharing this uh, case study. It's you know, you've been telling me over the phone and I was super excited when you told me you had a presentation mm -hmm. and I wanted to see if you can come on here and share it. Um, so if somebody wanted to have their vet consult with you or get the microbiome fecal transplant shipped to their vet, uh, mm -hmm. what can they do? Well, you know, I'm trying to have it where it's done through the veterinarian. So if they want to go, um, you know, have it, they can have their animal tested through animal biome. They do the 16 S and they do a very nice presentation on that. So they can, they can do that independently of the veterinarian. Um, the reason I want to do it with a veterinarian is so that a, we can make sure that they're getting the support. Um, and I, I, you know, whenever I try to help somebody with a veterinarian on the side, if I can help somebody and then it, if the veterinarian is not there, then I've got a lot of phone time and work with that person. And I don't have the time to do that. You know, so if they're working with a veterinarian and I can, especially if it's a holistic vet who's already doing ozone, that makes it so much easier to converse with them, get them to on board with it because they've, they've probably heard me lecture on ozone and fecal transplant. So they're, they're already getting it. So getting your regular veterinarian to embrace the microbiome part is, is going to be something that they can start to read because ACVIM which is the American Veterinary you know, um, Specialty Board, uh, is already recommending it, but they're not recommending donors of quality. They're just saying a healthy dog. So to me, what is a healthy dog? You know, If it's had lots of antibiotics and has had uh, a lot of vaccines and is taking, has pesticides on it, it's not a healthy dog. I wouldn't want a donor from that. That's not what I would want one from. I mean, that would yeah. be someone who I'd go for. So, no, for sure. No, definitely not. Um, after a round of antibiotics, I mean, I'm just sure you've seen so many, like a, a wide spectrum of cases that it's some, some dogs have needed multiple, some dogs have needed a pregnant poop or some dogs did well with the heat poop. You know, what, um, have you, have you had, do you know like what dog has had the most fecal transplants and like, do you know? Well, probably if Christy's on, is she there? Would she hide? Oh, time yeah. in? Christy, I think is watching. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Where's your case? I need your case because I'm going to present this <laughs> angel. We need your case. Yes. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's each time we explain this to somebody, it's so much easier if we can put a face to that suffering animal. And, you know, it, it means more. When you saw that picture of Doug, isn't it hit you more than if I just talked about poop? It you know, does, yeah. and, and that's why we need these cases. We need to be 
having them in front of them and saying, oh, I mean, and especially having it in the owner's own words to sort of explain how, how terrible it was to have this dog who was having, she said five times a night, her husband or her had to go downstairs and every hour and 15 minutes, let this dog out. That's that is not crazy. a lot to be living for any animal, let alone two family members that have to take shifts to open the no. door and let the dog out, right? You're, so you're, it's you're just, a, getting... but to have it stop in one day, it wasn't just going to happen. I'm sorry. I mean, if anybody says it was going to, you know, happen anyway, um, and that was the re that's the response I got with Stoven, who was the case I presented, that finally the antibiotics kicked in after we gave him, you know, it was like, no, we took him off the antibiotics, you know? So it's just, it's, it's having people really respect how the body wants to heal itself and not think that the veterinarian has to always be the one who has to give them the right drug to make them get better. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you give that animal their innate ability to heal? How do you get that back again? And right. that's, that's really what holistic vets are trying to do. Yeah. The microbiome is such an important piece and uh, it's not always as simple as given a probiotic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and with, with 10 strains, you know, it's, it's, there's such value in a fecal transplant. And I'm so glad that these, you know, now these three, Oregon, LA and New Jersey are going to be getting their donor dogs. And of course they're going to be love it. They're going to be well-loved, you know, family companions, and they're going to have beautiful lives, but they're also going to be saving hundreds and hundreds and thousands of other dogs' lives, you know, through with their very much, Very much. Yeah. It, it, so I think it's, it's just, it's a very important um, piece that I think veterinarians can, you know, see a case that is troubling to them and say, wait a second, you know, let's get you to Dr. Bukoff down in New Jersey you know, I'm in wherever, and he can do this microbiome with the ozone, you know, and it doesn't mean every veterinarian needs to be setting up their whole fecal banks and doing that, but all the veterinarians can order the microbiome from us, but they still need to add the other stuff. Just giving the fecal transplant, just as much as the angel did the fecal transplant, didn't work. Mm -hmm. it didn't work. You need to do the nurturing and the building to help that those microbes find a new home and not just throw it into a, what I call like, put them into an apartment. You, some of you moved into an apartment with concrete walls and concrete table and a concrete chair and a concrete bed and say, go live there. And you go, where am I supposed to be? I don't know where I'm supposed to be well, on that concrete bed. Well, I don't want to live in that bed. Why can't I have like a mattress on there? Like, you know, not the, not to say that that microbe needs a mattress, but to really say you want to find something that is copacetic to the you know, to the, to the microbiome so that they want to stay there and they want to, you know, colonize that wall of the colon. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, the, the ozone piece is so important, like you said, and uh, I just wonder if it would have the same effect. I, I don't, I don't really think it would. And also, you know, you got to come back on another time and talk about Plechner in more detail, which we've done before, but, you mm -hmm. know, I wonder if you didn't test for Plechner and treat that, you know, is the dog getting uh, prednisone to, for the cortisol? Right now, no, we're not doing that. We're, we're really, we're right now with Doug, we're just giving the nutraceuticals and poop. And, okay, and seeing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't jump to give them because his, his thyroid was okay. I think he just <clears throat> nutrition. He, poor thing is starving because he has diarrhea all the time. And he's fed a diet yep. that is, is literally not worth the crap that it produces. <laughs> you know, it's like not even healthy. So giving him a healthy, organic, fresh diet has to be better than a processed food that is, is made with this weird fiber that makes them congeal. You're not feeding those microbes. I can't imagine how dehydrated he must have been from all the diarrhea. I know. I, I feel so, you know, I mean, I, you know, thank goodness he's better. I mean, I saw him the other day, he came in the clinic. He looked great. He looked really good. He did? Oh, oh that's yeah, great. he really looks good. We took a picture of him in front of the clinic, sort of well, so, so, you know. This is him, you know, his, his uh, energy and stuff was way better. And, but it's just, it's, it's, you know, I feel so sorry for him, but for people that love their animals and they, they, they see them squirting this diarrhea all night long, you know, they're worried so much that their dog's got a hemorrhage or something from just straining so much. Right. Right. 
So, um, so I, I'm hoping that, you know, this, this whole case can be something to, because I love Angel Memorial. I did my internship there. I respect them a lot. There are a lot of brilliant people that are there, but there's also ideas that we all need to collaborate and share because not everybody has all the answers. And if you have somebody who wants to share an idea and can give you a case, which I did already 10 years ago, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to like jostle there to remember that land. Well, let's do that again for that. But if we can get, you know, uh, Cocoella's case and other cases to come on and really, you know, spearhead this, we can really probably save a lot of animals, a lot of suffering and people, a lot of money. Yeah, that would be, that would be incredible. You got to mm -hmm. do it. Um, yeah, I like Angel too. And obviously super grateful for, you know, them with, with, with Allie at the end of her life, uh, you know, but as soon as we were done with that, we were given poop during a course of antibiotics. And I know that wasn't what you would have done. We were doing the poop four hours after and she didn't, you know, she must have had antibiotics three times in five months. It was not something that I wanted to do. Like I was scared to do that. And we did the, and the fecal transplant. We did several of them right after the course is done, mm -hmm. you know, and, and continue with, continued with daily poop orally. And uh, I really feel like it was a, a game changer. You know, it really mm -hmm. did. It was a huge game changer. She, she, would not, she would have died. She would not have been here if it weren't for MASH and the fecal transplant and the ozone and everything that you guys did. It's, you know what I mean? So, no, I mean, it really, it does help so many animals. And it's so sad that we can't let the veterinary board doesn't agree with it. Um, the, they just don't want to accept another modality that could be so helpful um, and so cost effective for the owner and the veterinarian to be utilizing. And we really need to have voices talk about that, how important it is to have these choices um, in, in medicine. And, you know, when somebody, when you have a veterinarian, like myself who studies with doctors around the world. I mean, I've been to, you know, probably 15 or 20 ozone conferences, you know, and world congresses and, and international committees on scientific information on ozone and lectured at these things. You know, my background in, in these therapies is, is a lot, you know, and so adding that dimension and being able to share that information with my clients, being able to share that with my patients, um, and other colleagues is just, uh, you know, can move the needle to help these animals in a big way. Right. I think sometimes I get uh, people roll their, eye, roll their eyes at me a little bit because, you know, in my group, you know, lots of people come in on a daily basis with cancer, allergies, uh, skin issues, just, you know, Cushing's, Addison, you name it, like everything. Like, and it's just now we're about 6,200 members plus in this group. And, you know, and so, you know, I don't know how many people are actively, you know, I'm sure we have a lot of silent uh, observers, you know, but um, the fecal transplant and, 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 you know, is one of the things that I recommend the most in ozone. And I just feel like it's uh, hard to, because, you know, someone today responded to me, well, we don't have that. My vet doesn't do that here. And, you know, it just, People, what could you, how would, how could you empower pet owners to, to, to say to their vet, Hey, I really want to do this. You know, well, if we, have, if, them, if, have them go to our websites, watch some of the videos. I mean, I did three TV shows for Dedham TV, one on microbiome, one on ozone and one on plant-based powered dogs, but the ozone one and the microbiome, if those don't, if the microbiome one doesn't convince them from the cases that I present. I don't know if you, I think you should find another veterinarian, to be honest with you. Find somebody who has, has a mind that is striving to find solutions. And if, you know, a doctor is an educator, that's the definition of a doctor. And if you don't have a veterinarian who's willing to learn, and I have to make the excuse right now, veterinarians are overwhelmed with COVID. Not with they have COVID, but they're overwhelmed because we all need twice as much staff and veterinarians so you aren't working. We, you know, I have like twice as many people as I used to have because we can't have the, we're not having the owner in the room yet. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of extra uh, work on the part of the vet. So it's, it's hard, you know, to have them add one, they're like burnt out and we don't want them burning out and committed suicide or doing something crazy like that, you know, but we got to, but I, I keep thinking that vets, if they had to, these, two, these simple two solutions, to so many cases, 
that they would feel much more successful in their practice because they're actually nurturing that animal versus just drugging another drug with another drug, you know, and that's where you could hope to, to have these veterinarians collaborate with you as a team, part of a team for your animal and say, look, we looked into this stuff. We really think it's an opportunity. And I just gave a lecture uh, last, last uh, uh, Wednesday night in Japan. So I virtually uh, to the military bases in Japan to try to help the military dogs um, and the US citizens that are in Japan that utilize the, the military base for their animal care. And I presented Doug's case and I presented a bunch of allergy cases. And I talked about o introducing ozone into the practice for, for pain management and for um, inflammation. And part of the reason for talking about the pain management is that just this is, isn't this upset? This is just me was so upsetting when they told me the military dogs that they use, these very highly trained dogs, they're probably worth $30,000, $40,000 worth of training to be military dogs, right? They, most of them are on gabapentin and NSAIDs at a year and a half, and they stay on it for the rest of their lives because they're so inflamed from, you know, jumping over fences and jump climbing walls or whatever they do to keep them in the physical shape to do these things. So they have to keep them on pain meds and they have to retire them really early. And what they do is that when they re bring them back into retirement from re into retirement, they sell them to a family because he's all obedience trained and all that kind of stuff. And they give them one month worth of, of uh, gabapentin and, rim and rimadil or whatever and sad they're using. And then after that, the owner is on their own. And so I was talking to them about what you need to bring acupuncture, you need to be ozone, you need to bring prolozone, you need to bring that microbiome instead of keep loading on more anti-inflammatories, more antibiotics, these poor dogs are falling apart very young and they are so valuable to our military. Yeah, They're so valuable to our military. And that said, you know, my last statement to them is that my hope, because I'm trained as a um, my training for ozone is certified in human medicine. So I'm trained with my certification to do ozone and prolozone on people, but I, there was no cert, there's no certification for veterinarians. So I had to get certified in people. And, you know, is that if we can show the veterinarians with this one health, one medicine can show the, the, the veterinarians from the military base can show how they're making these military dogs improve their health by using these modalities that this could be part of what we supply our military with. So instead of you know, having our military on opiates for pain meds, they get prolozone or they get chiropractic or they get acupuncture or they get laser or they get some of these other things so they don't have to go on opiates and pain meds and then they become addicted and then they end up, you know, it's, it's a whole spiral downward for them. Oh, wow. So what was their response when you- Oh, after they're you... going to get ozone and all the, they're going to start getting ozone and all of them. They yeah. are? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. How do they, okay. What, do you know any more than that? Like how, how, do, how are they going to do that? Who's well, gonna, we had, we had, we had longevity on there. They gave a demo of the machine and they're going to try to somehow uh, be able to keep the price reasonable so that they can, all the military bases can get it. Wow. That was, yeah, so that was, isn't that exciting? That's exciting. And the microbiome, so, you know, we're, we're freeze drying the microbiome in, in Canada and hopefully we can start shipping internationally. So maybe we can get them some, some of our, our microbiome freeze dried and sent out internationally. That would be wonderful. That yeah. would be wonderful. That would be really well, wonderful. But, you know, if we could help these animals and they're, they're doing their job in our military, we should be doing everything we can to take care of them. And same thing with our military. We need to be taking care of them in the best, 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 best way. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Roman, thank you again so much for coming on. It's 830. I'm sure you're exhausted. You guys are so busy at MASH. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Well, uh, I you know we need another veterinarian. So if anyone knows any veterinarian who wants to be a good educator, who wants to learn more, who needs to likes winters in New England, please, please, please have them give me a call. <laughs> yes, yes. You can reach out to me and I can put you in touch with Dr. Roman if you don't know how to get in contact with her. But I put the link in the comments, www.mashvet.com. 
and www.microbiomerestorativetherapy.com are the two websites to check out, um, especially if you are a pet parent and this story resonated with you or you just want to do the microbiome fecal transplant, you know, talk to your veterinarian, you know, show them the MASH and the micro MBRT website, have them reach out to MASH. They have to be the one to order the microbiome. Um, you know, the ozone training is kind of hard. It's kind of hard to, you know, if, if you want something. No, but- not, it's not that, I mean, there's, there's going to be a training in Florida um, with O3 vets, I think next week. Yes. There's a veterinary summit coming up. Yeah. The veterinary summit's next week. And, um, you know, people can, can do it online. Some of it, the live training um, is probably better, but you could learn a lot online. And then the other part is I, for veterinarians, I have a course that's through Udemy that it was my course that I taught with the American Academy of Ozone Therapy about five years now, four and a half years ago. And they can pay to watch that through Udemy. There's no CE credit anymore. I had it for the first two years, but then we dropped it. It was just dropped the CE credit, but you can take that course. Um, it's like $199 and get a lot of information on that, on my presentation for that. I will, uh, I'll link that as well right now. And anyone, you guys can, uh, yeah, it's 199 ozone therapy, most needed adjunct to veterinary, me- veterinary medicine um, created by Marco Roman. Yeah, it's about eight hours of videos. Yeah. Wow. Eight hours. Okay. For this is for the veterinarian. For veterinarians. Yeah. I, you know, I made it for veterinarians. I mean, I, I was hoping in my free time um, to be able to do another one for, for clients, but that has not happened, <laughs> but I yeah. still want to do it. But at some point, I'm gonna do it. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to sign? You want to say before we sign off? I just want to uh, say just everybody stay healthy and safe, and uh, you know, let's hopefully we'll get back to some kind of normalcy, and conferences and stuff will be live and not so virtual. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Until next time. Okay. Take care. Take care. Bye. <laughs>